Hi there, in this video we're looking at fixed point iteration um, and what needs to happen for it to converge and how quickly it will converge. Okay, so let's have a quick look at how and when these converge and um, how these when these methods actually work. Um, so let's have a look at our first one over here. So um, here, things to note, um, the blue curve, g of x, or the gradient of that at the point we're after, um, g dash of, and um, let's call that point a in each case, um, is less than 1. Um, but it's also positive, it's, it's an increasing function, um, so our gradient there is between 0 and 1. Um, and that's the first thing really you need to notice, and that's what's going to determine how well um, it converges to this point in most cases. Um, so let's just pick any x naught. Let's go here. Okay, so remember we go up to the blue curve and then across to the um, orange line and up to the blue curve and so on. Um, so we go up to the blue curve, across to that line, up, across, um, and it looks like that's going to converge to A quite quickly. Um, let's compare that to this one. Um, now this one, things that we should note is that our gradient of our function um, in this one is greater than 1. And so our gradient here is greater than 1. Um, so let's again just pick a pick an x naught. Let's go here, um, and we'll we'll see what happens. So again, remember we've got to go to the blue line first. So we go up to the blue line, and then we've got to go across to that orange line, which takes us further away from this point that we want. Um, and then we go back down to the blue line, and then across, and we're going to diverge. We're going to get as farther and farther away um, from this point A. Um, and that's because the gradient of this function, um, pretty much anywhere we can see, is bigger than 1. Okay, let's have a look at this one. Um, so if we call this point A again, um, well this one's quite interesting, this one's a little bit more interesting, because if x is greater than A, so on this side of the curve, well the gradient of x um, is bigger than 1, um, but if x is less than A, then the gradient of the curve is less than 1. Um, so we'll give just a few seconds to have a think about exactly what that's going to mean in terms of whether it will converge, how quickly it will converge, where it will converge. Okay, so if you guessed that it will converge if x is less than a, and it will diverge if x is greater than a, give yourself a pat on the back because that is correct. So let's, let's just demonstrate how this works. So if x is less than a, so if we pick some point over here, um, we go up to the blue and then across and then up and then across and so on. Um, we're going to get closer and closer to that point a. Um, but if we pick some x that's greater than a, um, actually it doesn't matter how close we are to the solution, even if we start quite close to our, to our point a, um, if we go straight up to the curve and then across, there we go. Um, so that one's going to diverge. So that one diverges um, and that one converges. Okay, so we've looked at three so far. Um, now these three all oscillate between um, the two lines and they're always on the same side of the point A, either converging or diverging. They're always on the same side of the point A. And now these ones are called staircase diagrams. Um, I'm not 100% sure why they call them staircase diagrams because they don't look anything like my staircase. Um, but this one's going to be slightly different. It's going to give us a different type of diagram, which we've already seen, actually. Um, so here we have g of x, or the gradient of x, are in this neighbourhood. Um, now this time it's negative, so it is less than zero, um, but it is still bigger than negative one. Now it's a bit weird to think about 
and the gradient being bigger, um, but it's greater than negative one, which means it's less steep than if the gradient were a negative one. Um, so it's a little bit, little bit backwards to think about it compared to these ones, um, but because it's between negative one and zero, this one should converge. So let's look what happens if we pick ours uh, x naught. There we go. And um, this gradient here looks like it's quite close to negative one, so it's going to converge quite slowly. Um, but if we follow it round, eventually it will converge. Okay, so we've seen a few staircase diagrams and we've seen a cobweb diagram. Um, so they're the two types we can get. Um, let's have a quick look at this one here. Um, so this one, we have two points. Let's call them A and B. And um, so while you're watching at home, please just make a guess at which of these two solutions you think it's going to com um, converge to, given the examples we've looked at so far. Okay, if you said point A, then well done, because that is exactly where it's, where it's going to converge to, if this does, does in fact converge. Okay, now let's pick us a few points to see what happens. So if I pick us a point here, quite close to this root A, um, and everywhere along this bottom bit of curve, the gradient um, is, is between negative one and one. Um, so we shouldn't have any problems here because we're still in this neighborhood of this, um, this root here. And because it's quite flat, it does converge quite slowly in this sort of region here. Um, let's have a look at maybe picking a different x naught this time though. Let's pick an x naught that's underneath this steep bit of curve. Um, and let's see what's going to happen here. We go up to the line and then we go to the curve, uh, up to the curve and then to the line and then to the curve and then to the line. And if you see what's happened is it starts off being a staircase diagram where the gradient is positive. Um, it just so happened that we hit this point here where the gradient looks like it's just slightly negative. So it'll start spiraling around and turn into a cobweb, di cobweb diagram at that point. Um, so anywhere in between these two solutions, it looks like it's going to converge to A. Um, let's try one more. Let's try one up here. So if I start to the right of B, so if I start here, well, we hit the curve and then we go to the line this way and we're going to diverge. So anywhere to the right of B, we're going to diverge. Um, and let's just, for completeness, check somewhere over here where the gradient is still quite steep, um, but we're still close to this point. So if we go up to the curve, um, well, here, this point, we seem to be okay because when we go back to this line y equals x, we're now to the left of this point b, so we'll still converge. But if we go far enough to the, to the left here and we hit this blue curve above where it crosses b, then we'll end up on the right hand side of b and we'll diverge. So that one's a little bit trickier. Um, and in an exam, you could be expected to explain where it will converge and why it won't, will and won't converge at different places. Okay, and finally, let's have a look at this one. Um, now this is a special case, um, and we're in the special case where G of X um, is it's a self inverse. It's the same as G inverse of X, um, which means it's symmetrical around this line Y equals X. Um, now again, I'll just give you a second or two to see if you can predict what's going to happen if we're trying to use fixed point iteration um, on a function like this. Um, a really common example is 1 over x. Um, if you try and use 1 over x, or fixed point iteration on 1 over x, it won't work. Okay, so this one won't converge, um, but it's actually a really, really interesting as to why it won't converge and what will happen. So if I start here and go up to this point, and um, when I put this into my function, I'll get an output. Okay. Now that output will be, if I put, let's call this A, then my output here is going to be G of A. Now, what happens if I then put G of A back into this function? Well, that turns into G of G of A, um, but because G is its own inverse, the G's cancel out. 
and I actually end up back exactly where I started at A. So what's going to happen here, if your function is a self-inverse, is that you'll start at a point on the curve and you'll spiral, you'll oscillate between exactly the same two points. So if you start plugging these values into a calculator, it will just oscillate exactly between, between two points.